Comme son pied. Non, on sait le pied. On sait le pied. Bye, 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 coach. Bye, coach. Bye, coach. Bye, coach. Bye, coach. Ok. Ok, good. Ok. With the hospitals in Port-au-Prince overwhelmed with trauma patients from the earthquake disaster, Dr. Guy Theodore, an American-trained surgeon in a remote mountain village, is doing his best to pick up the slack. There are a bunch of a patients. When you see that we put people in the hall like that, it means that the whole hospital is full of casualty coming from Port-au-Prince. All type, broken leg, infected wounds, loss of legs, they take care of the ones who are worse first. Those who can wait are still waiting. They have been working 24 hours a day. Because we don't have electricity here, we have to work on generators. It is not surprising that so many earthquake victims have done anything they could, traveling in pain over nearly impassable roads to make it to Dr. Guy's hospital in the village of Pignon, three hours north of the capital. The sickest in Haiti have always come here. This facility is considered one of the best, and one of the very few free hospitals in the country. What is this case? You can see the size of his belly. The bowel is dilated inside the belly. The, the first thing she told us that she has any money. We have to take care of her anyway. We have the moral obligation. Otherwise, there will have been a lot of them who die just not having the chance to see a doctor. In order to treat patients free of charge, Dr. Guy relies on the support of Haitian Americans and U.S. aid groups to help fund his efforts in Haiti. And that's my picture when I was in the Air Force as a full blood colonel. So I left the Air Force in 1983, coming back to Pignon. After leaving the United States Air Force as a chief surgeon, rather than retiring in comfort in America, Dr. Guy returned to live full time in Pignon, his hometown. Here, there are only a few hours of electricity per day, and you can count the number of cars in town on one hand. But Dr. Guy was coming home to fulfill a childhood promise he had made to his father. There was no hospital in the area. I was a little boy of 11 years old, and I have a friend of mine who became sick and died from the disease without having the chance to see a doctor. And I questioned my father why we don't have doctors. So I told him, if the Lord bless me to become a doctor, I will come back to serve. For Dr. Guy, serving Haiti has also meant building nine schools in rural areas, addressing a dire need here for free education among the poor. Fifty percent of the people in Haiti are illiterate, and with most schools being private, education is an unreasonable luxury for many families. She would like to be a nurse. She would like to be a nurse too. Nurse. Why do they want to be? They've all seen your hospital and they've that, seen nurses. That's why right. they see nurses. They could identify with them. Yeah. At my time, I couldn't identify to anybody because there was no nurses, no doctors. Okay, then I'm the president. Okay, I'm the Okay, monsieur. I'm the Okay. Last year, Dr. Guy decided to run for president of Haiti. His various projects make him the largest private employer in the region. The social programs he has started and the hundreds of jobs he has created has made him increasingly popular among the rural poor. After avoiding Haitian politics for years in order to build his humanitarian projects free of government interference, he believes the time has come to take his programs to the national level. The politics, avant tout, c'est pour faire de madame. Une politique, soit faire de cœur. Qu'on n'a pas suspendu voter pour moun. His campaign platform is to spread his health care, education, and microfinance programs throughout Haiti. Women in Pyongyang have been particularly empowered by Dr. Guy's vision. In a country that had an unemployment rate of 70 percent before the earthquake, these women are participating in a microfinance group that has turned them into major earners for their families and reduced the number of children they give birth to. Après midi à nous réunir pour nous ta parler sous affaire planine parce que le monde avec tant ça qu'on y a 
ou faire 5, 6, 7 petites, en nous-mêmes, nous, ça, ce n'est pas un avantage lié. Dr. Guy says the creation of microfinance jobs across Haiti are now more important than ever. Though generally admired around the country, outside of the rural north, Dr. Guy cannot take the support of voters for granted. And with very little television, radio, or internet coverage throughout Haiti, candidates must travel town by town along roads that reflect decades of political instability. On this day last November, Dr. Guy was campaigning in Capetian, Haiti's second largest city. He now travels with a security detail, having learned that running for president in Haiti can quickly turn you in the eyes of some, from a humanitarian into a marked man. We are coming with a, a new agenda to change Haiti. And the new agenda, number one, is to fight corruption. But fighting corruption is dangerous in a country where national political office has long been used as a way for people to get rich. And so his bodyguards are always close by, checking his hotel room for bombs and guarding his door when he sleeps. That's something that I have to get used to. <laughs> that is really something that I have to get used to. The presidential election was scheduled for later this year. But since the earthquake, no one knows exactly when it will be held. Dr. Guy figures he needs to raise a few million dollars to be competitive once they are finally rescheduled. May I thank you all for being here. It is an occasion for me tonight to ask you to provide your help. The only place where that kind of money can be raised is among his supporters in the educated Haitian diaspora. Dr. Guy uses his permanent residence status to travel frequently to the United States for fundraising events like this one outside of New York City. Thank you for being here. Well, that's the most important thing to have. If you have the diaspora uh, uh, backing you up, that is very important. For instance, the, the hospital, if it wasn't for the community here, we would not have that hospital in Pion. Haitian government, because you tout ces volets. Leo bye bye on bagay. Debi si Haiti on bagay. Debi 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 Haiti on The current Haitian president, Rene Preval, is not running for re-election. And as anger grows among the people over the government's poor response to the earthquake, Dr. Guy believes he is better positioned now than ever to run for president. No class question. But the presidential palace and much of Haiti lies in ruins. And for now, Dr. Guy's political aspirations are on hold. This get get surgery yesterday. And you can see how bad the broken legs was. No election now. There is not a time to talk about election now. To me, it's a time to talk about taking care of the people and building the country. Going and campaigning now, I don't think it's the time. From Saint Michel, Monsieur Porto Prince, he was in Porto Prince. Renting Craig Renault, reporting from Haiti for the New York Times.